Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to talk about this book today, The New Authoritarianism, Trump, Populism and the Tyranny of Experts by Salvatore Baboni. Hang around. Okay, this great book uh, came out. I picked it up at a local bookshop recently. Um, it's called The New Authoritarianism. Obviously, uh, there's been a lot of discussion of late with this kind of new right politics um, that there was a kind of uh, return of a kind of authoritarianism or fascism. And the people who uh, are pointed the finger at are the new right, even though the new right support free speech, support democracy, support, um, you know, essentially... Uh, you know, a kind of populist worldview, which is essentially a democratic worldview. Um, uh, we are the ones who, who had, had the finger pointed at us. I want to read the blurb of this book and then discuss a little bit of this book with you today. OK, here we go. The election of Donald Trump and Brexit vote in the UK have caused fear and panic among liberals worldwide. They argue that the populist backlash represents a dangerous new authoritarianism. But what if the really dangerous authoritarianism is in fact their own? In this provocative and highly original book, Salvatore Baboni argues that democracy has been undermined by a quiet and devastating power grab uh, uh, conducted by a class of liberal experts. That's the politically correct way of saying the globalists. Um, they have advanced a global rights based agenda that has tilted the balance away from the library and vibrant unpredictability of democratic decision making towards the creeping technocratic authority of liberal consensus. Populism represents, contends, Barboni, an imperfect but reinvigorating political flood that has the potential to sweep away the decades of institutional detritus and rejuvenate democracy across the West. This book is published by Polity. Polity is a major left-wing publisher. So what you're seeing right there with the publication of this book is essentially the left acknowledging the nationalist position. This is a tremendous revolution for us. Um, essentially, we can take the left. The left could belong to us. Um, you know, obviously there'll still be a, a faction of the left that will be um, um, opposed to us. But the left itself realizes what's going on. They see this elite the same way that the the new nationalists and um, you know people who like Alex Jones who see the, the the globalist conspiracy. We all see what's going on. The left see what's going on. I have Marxist friends who are totally down with everything I say. Watch the report and love it and share it on Facebook and stuff like. You know, people know what's going on now. It is this elite. It is this technocratic global elite that is behind everything. They are behind everything fucked up. They are behind every war. They are behind the mass immigration movement. They are behind the lie of climate change. You know, they're behind everything. And, um, you know, that, and this kind of authoritarian creep um, that's discussed in this new book, this is the whole point. These people are the new fascists. They are the ones who've opened the door to fascism. They are the ones who want to police language. Um, Jordan Peterson has noticed this, you know, he, he railed against, um, you know, uh, like people, um, you know, having to have uh, their speech controlled. There are thought police in the UK. If you say certain things about immigration, the police will come and visit. This happened recently in New Zealand. I mean, obviously that woman who uh, many Australians love, the silly woman who wore the hijab, um, Jacinta, what's her name? Jacinta Ahern, I think her name is. Um, she clearly is in the control of, of, of the globalists. And um, is just uh, sold New Zealand um, out to the globalist agenda, and, and also to China, who are the, uh, again the secret, the great secret partners of the globalist agenda, because they are the people who will eventually rule the world. I think um, that's their plan. And I think um, you know people who live in Western civilization, it's quite simple. Um, you know, uh, when you have ruled the world for I don't know how long has the West ruled the world. You could probably argue right back to ancient Greece, so that's 2,500 years. When you have ruled the world for 2,500 years, you don't go from number one to number two. You know what I mean? Like, if China takes over, uh, we're not on the number two rung. We go just to the bottom of the pile. And you think, well, what could Europeans at the bottom of the pile, what could that look like? South Africa. OK, that's what, a, that's what the future of all European people is. Uh, essentially, a country where um, the population itself is dominated by uh, uh, another ethnic group um, who bear probably you know, a lot of uh, hatred towards us, probably some of possibly even justified, um, you know, uh, and um, uh, even though there are still polite systems of, um, of democracy in South Africa, um, in their hearts, they want one thing, which is the annihilation of all the white people in, um, 
uh, in South Africa, and eventually that will happen. Um, recently, it was very interesting when, uh, obviously, there's been a reappropriation of, uh, of land and many, many attacks on farmers in South Africa. Uh, and um, there was an announcement from some uh, leader of the current leadership structure that they wanted to re reappropriate more of the white farmer's land. And Donald Trump essentially just did one tweet. I've instructed a general, one of his major generals, to examine the situation in South Africa. And instantly it stopped. Because, you know, we still rule the world. I mean, for now, not for very much longer, but we still do rule the world. And right now in, in the uh, White House, we have someone who occasionally at least will stand up for um, European and white interests. Um, so from that one tweet, instantly it stopped. Because, you know, essentially, well, America could take South Africa in like 10 minutes. You know what I mean? The, South Africa doesn't have a military. I mean, it has some military, I guess, but I mean, th they could be swept away by a, a division or two of the United States. Um, so anyway, you know, this is a, a, um, an amazing situation and um, that we're now in. But the, the new fascism, the new authoritarianism itself is emanating from the left. And, um, and this book I, I began the sh the, today's talk about discusses this and it's a clear proof that this is where it's been coming from. They want to limit free speech. You know, when an election like you know, Brexit happens, it's ignored. I mean, it's absolutely scandalous. I don't know how that is even possible. I don't know how. An I mean, it's un like it seems impossible that that could happen, but it has happened. So, you know, this is where the new authoritarianism is coming from. And this is the danger, too. And this is what I say to all left wing people who want to limit free speech. You have opened the door to authoritarianism, to fascism, to limiting, uh, you know, I mean, essentially the left has the opinion that if the, you, you don't like their ideas, you have to be silenced, all right? That's the idea of, of the left on many cases. And all I say to them is, okay, you think this, what about when someone like me, someone on the right, we begin to act that way? Because we fucking can, I'll tell you that right now. You know, I mean, you know, I don't, I mean, I have a quite middle right position in many ways, but believe me, People on the right are much better at this authoritarianism, much better at this fascism than you on the left. Do you really think a bunch of transgender, I don't know, are, are really going to be very good fascists? No, I don't think so. But what, people on the right? I mean, you know, hello? We, I mean, we invented this shit. You know what I mean? If anyone will, can do it right, we can. So, like, you know, you have opened the door, and at the moment, the right has not walked through that door. But we will, and then you're all fucked.